those first few moments when you when you first spotted the Titanic, what went through your head? Relief. I mean, I had been pursuing that ship for 13 years, so my feeling was, so it really exists. Wreckage. Bingo! Yeah! This is it! Uh, look at that thing. The third dive was the dive, because that dive, we landed uh, at the entrance to the grand staircase between the number one and number two stacks, and parked the submarine at 12,000 feet, and then sent JJ down the staircase, and he went eight down, about four decks into the ship. Move it around. Well, it's a very peaceful site, actually. It's, uh, it's sort of like a gentle alpine terrain. It's like a fresh snow has fallen, except it's gray or brownish gray instead of white. And the ship sits overlooking a canyon, upright on the bottom, and it's very quiet. There's a gentle current, a breeze blowing, and uh, it's very silent, and it's totally dark. Well, Alvin is a spaceship that goes in reverse. It's very much like a space capsule. It's a small ball of titanium, seven feet in diameter. Each of the three occupants have a window. It took us two and a half hours to get to work each morning. The pressure is 6,000 pounds per square inch. A Cadillac car on every square inch. Of wow. It. It's not in one piece. Titanic's in a couple of pieces. Three. What happened? How did well, that Well, that's happen? always been a, a, some of the controversy. There's, a, you know, the Titanic legend is full of facts and misinformation as well. The funnels are all gone. We've never even seen one in the debris field. Clearly, uh, the Titanic did not arrive on the bottom in one piece. That was a popular version. In fact, in the movie Raise the Titanic, they have it coming down and landing in one piece. And the reason we know that that couldn't have happened is that the two major pieces, the bow and the stern, are over 600 yards away from one another and pointed in the opposite direction. You found no skeletal remains? No. I've been asked that a lot. Uh, fortunately, the sea is very forgiving uh, like that. It removes all remains. Uh, even bones are gone. In those great waters, most people don't realize that the deeper it gets the, and the colder it gets, the more seawater can absorb bones, calcium carbonate, and dissolves them. But we didn't take anything. We actually left something, a beautiful brass plaque that's uh, given to us by the Titanic Historical Society to, uh, in memory of those who perished. So it was like you knew the ship extremely well, like you'd made several crossings on it, and quite honestly, by the time we spent 33 hours on the ship, we, we knew it as much as people had made the crossing. And we started reading little signs along the promenade. It's pretty strange. Well, certainly we'd like to work with museums. We've worked very hard to keep the Titanic in the proper vein. 